Okay, everybody's coming in. Better share the right one. Okay, looks like we're 7.01. We are expecting a few more individuals this evening. Um, but I am Kim Dennis and I'd like to welcome you all. Before we get started with the meeting, we would like to announce the 2024 Curl BC Award winners with a short video presentation. These awards recognize and honor individuals, teams, volunteers, organizations, and businesses for their outstanding contribution to the sport of curling in British Columbia. The first award this evening is for Sponsor of the Year. The Sponsor Award is presented to recognize the generosity of a sponsor towards curling in BC. This year's recipient was nominated for their significant contribution to youth curling events and commitment to supporting future champions. Congratulations, Safe Tech Profire. The Ron Houston Administrator of the Year Award was established in June 2016 in order to recognize contributions to the growth, advancement, or innovation of curling in the province of BC. Manager was nominated for her ability to connect people to one another and to the sport of curling, building a culture of inclusivity and belonging for those around her. Operationally, she has contributed to volunteer mentorship, revenue generation, and growth in participation. Congratulations to Susan Johnson, the manager of the Campbell River Curling Club. Curling Centre Volunteer of the Year is to recognize the outstanding contribution of an individual club member to their curling club that sets them apart from all other volunteers at the club level around the province. The recipient was nominated in recognition for their board leadership, volunteer mentorship and implementation for new initiatives. This individual has been invaluable to the club for their commitment to expand programming and provide quality curling experiences to all ages and ability. Congratulations to Nick Adamanchuk of the MacArthur Island Curling Club. Curling Centre of the Year is presented to a member facility that has generously contributed to the sport of curling through hosting multiple competitions or events in the current or previous years, developed or operated outstanding curling programs, demonstrated support for teams that experienced success at the provincial, national, or international level. This year's recipient was nominated for enhancing the reputation of curling, investing in program research and development, volunteer mentorship, and team support for their competitive youth curlers. Their expanded programming introduced 300 new individuals to the sport of curling via their tech leadership program, learn to curl nights, and school programs. Their expanded programming has made the curling club the place to be within their rural community. Congratulations to the Sparwood Curling Club. The first long and exceptional service award this evening is the Elsie McKenzie Youth and Junior Curling Program Volunteer of the Year. This award is presented to an individual who has given extended and dedicated service to the youth and junior curling programs within a club, region, or the province.
This individual was nominated for her volunteer mentorship, increase in participation and retention in programs, and enhanced communication within the club and community to promote youth curling. Congratulations to Melanie Capico of the Kamloops Curling Club. Judy Roberts was a true friend of curling. The life member of Curl BC freely volunteered her time in various capacities in various communities in BC for more than 30 years. Named in her honour in 2017, the Judy Roberts Friendship Award is presented to a person or organisation that has performed exceptional service to benefit curling in BC. The recipient is being recognised for her contributions to organisational leadership, program research and development, enhancing competition and provincial leadership. She is an active official at all levels of play, team coach, and is currently the home coach for athlete Ina Forrest of Canada's National Wheelchair Curling Club. Congratulations to Sharon Morrison of the Vernon Curling Club. The Pat Kennedy Award will be given to a volunteer who has served curling in BC in an outstanding capacity over a number of years. This year's recipient is recognized for her ongoing dedication to contributing to the growth and retention of curling in BC. She has taken the lead to organize events, programs, and support operations to provide positive curling experiences for all. Congratulations to Lori Goulet of the Peace Arch Curling Club. The Jeanette Robbins Builder Award will be given to an individual who represents the spirit of volunteerism and whose outstanding dedication, energy and commitment is critical to curling development and the advancement of curling in BC. This individual sets an example of service for other volunteers. This year's recipient has served the curling community at the local, regional and provincial level for over 10 years. He has helped to revitalize his home curling club and shifted his focus to ensure that facility renewal and replacement is attainable for all curling facilities in BC for generations to come. Congratulations to Neil Campbell of the Victoria Curling Club. The Wally Malott Official of the Year Award recognizes the accomplishments of our curling umpires and officials in BC. This year's recipient officiated at multiple events, building a positive rapport with her peers, local host committees, athletes, coaches, and staff across BC. She is a team player, organized, and communicates the rules with clarity to all stakeholders. Congratulations to Lucy Tremblay of the Kamloops Curling Club. This award is named in the memory of Anita Cochran. The Anita Cochran Coach of the Year Award recognizes the accomplishments of the best coaches in BC. This year's recipient was nominated for coaching multiple teams who performed at the provincial and national levels of competition. He contributed to the development of BC Winter Games coaches in the coach apprentice role sharing his knowledge and experiences with his peers. Congratulations to Logan Mirren of the Victoria Curling Club. Team of the Year recognizes the performance of a team at the provincial, national and world level and will take into consideration contributions of the team to influence curling within their community. This team has been selected for their exceptional skill, sportsmanship and dedication to curling. Despite being the youngest team at most competitive events, they excelled in their podium pursuit. They ended the season with two podium finishes, including third place at the U18 BC Championships and winning gold at the 2024 Lataco Cornell BC Winter Games. Congratulations to Team Jaeger of the Kelowna Curling Club. Congratulations to all of our 2024 Curl BC Award winners. Good evening, everyone. I just am calling the meeting to order. It's Brenda McClellan. 
congratulations to all of our award winners. And thank you to everyone who took the time to nominate all the worthy candidates. And now I'd like to welcome you to Curl BC's annual general meeting. I am the chair of the Board of Governors and will be chairing the meeting. I will now call the meeting to order. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that while you are all joining us from communities and regions across the province, Pearl BC is located on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Hunkaminam and Squamish speaking peoples. Pearl BC is honored to ground our work on these territories as we strive to increase our access to all curling for all British Columbians. I would like to ask Kim Dennis, if you could please confirm that we have a quorum and the number of member facilities present. A quorum is a minimum of 20% of Crow BC's 89 facilities, which is 18. Kim? I would like to confirm with 18 voting members present. Um, it will require, for motion to pass, it will require greater than 50% or 10 votes in favor. Thank you very much, Kim. When we get to the governor at large elections, we have four candidates, three for a three-year term and one for a two-year term. Voting member delegates, please use the chat feature for voting, only if opposed. Always start with your club name. Everyone is welcome to use the Q&A option for any inquiries. At this time, please review the agenda for approval. And I would ask if there are any amendments to the agenda, please use the chat box to provide us any amendments and include your club's name. Seeing none, the motion to approve the agenda as is was moved by the Langley Curling Club and seconded by the Soyuz Curling Club. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. Kim, I don't believe I see. Uh, yep, there are none opposed. Thank you. Please review the minutes from the last annual general meeting held on June 8th, 2023. Please use the chat box to inform us of any clarifications or additions. Seeing none, the motion to approve the minutes for the June 8, 2023 annual general meeting minutes was moved by the Delta Thistle Club and seconded by the Fort St. John Curling Club. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. Seeing none, I will. Brenda, yes. Fort St. John is not on the call yet. Oh. Do, do we have an additional seconder, Kim? I do not have one. 
Can we put it and to the floor? We have one of the clubs second the motion, please. To do so, you will need to use the chat box. It, they're using uh, the Q and A, Brenda. I, I'm not sure that the, some are saying the chat is disabled. So um, okay. either would be fine. Yeah. I think I can second it because I'm not on the board, right? Yeah. Right. Did you see the name? Okay, well, VCC says it's second. Okay. okay. So that's the, Van the Vancouver Club will second the motion. And I can now call for the vote. Please use the chat. Oh, please use the Q&A the Q &A if you are opposed. Only if you are opposed. I, we have no, no opposers, so we'll continue to introduce the board to you. I would like to recognize the other members of the board who served this season. Neil Campbell, Vice Chair. Brenda Sims, Vice Chair. Morgan Lipka, Vice Chair. Terry Phillips, Governor. Erlene Graham, Governor. Lyle Sieg, Governor. A big thank you to these governors for all of their voluntary contributions to curling in BC this year. Thank you very much. I would also especially like to welcome any life and honorary life members who have joined the meeting. Thank you for your service to Curling in BC. Curl BC is a complex provincial sport organization and to achieve its goals depends on a network of volunteers. On behalf of the Curl BC Board of Governors, I would like to recognize all of the club volunteers, the event hosts, committee members, consultants, and facilitators, and of course, all of the ICE technicians and the officials. You make it all work. We thank you. The 2023-24 curling season has been an excellent one. We've seen our numbers climb from athletes, certified coaches, and officials. We added a few more member clubs, which shows that curling is on the up and up. We also want to thank the Curl BC staff for all their hard work put into this past season. As chair and on behalf of all of us, I would like to commend their ongoing commitment on behalf of curling in British Columbia and Canada. At this point, I'd like to give a warm welcome to our special guest, Nolan Thiessen, CEO of Curling Canada, who is joining us to bring greetings from the national organization. Thank you for joining us, Nolan. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, it's exciting. This is actually um, I've only been in the role now for about five and a half months. This is actually the first AGM that I've got to attend. So it's been, uh, this is great. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, super appreciative of of all the work that Curl BC does for our game. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that, um, you know, we work on together on, on different councils, like the operations advisory council and, and now the governance advisory council with Curling Canada that, you know, I think it just, it makes our game better. There's, and then there's other subcommittees that come out of that. Right. And you've got your, uh, your staff that, that, um, talks to people like David, uh, Murdoch, uh, our high performance director, people 
um, like Helen Radford, our next gen program, um, you know, creating that alignment in the system is, is so critical and, and the support of curl BC to do that is, is great. Um, you know, I think that's a, it's an exciting year this year, uh, with curling in BC, uh, with, with us, you know, obviously I know that the Invictus games is going to be there with wheelchair curling. And I know that Scott is doing, uh, uh, quite a bit to to try to make inroads and use that as a platform to grow wheelchair curling, which is exciting. Um, and then obviously with the Briar being in Kelowna this year, um, we uh, it, we're really excited. This is uh, this will be the last of the COVID makeup uh, events, right? Uh, Kelowna was supposed to host in 2021, and and um, you know we asked them when they would like to host in the future, and it ended up being now and. Um, we're just so excited uh, to be coming out there in March. Um, you know, the ticket sales when we initially went on sale were really great. Um, you know, we're excited. We we're hoping to have a really, really strong attendance and a really great event. Um, you know, the other really cool event that's going to be there at the same time is the U15 Rock Fest, um, which is going to have, you know, two of the territories and then Alberta and BC athletes. Um, and then the really cool thing about it being um, on the opening weekend of the Briar is we get to also then bring the kids out to to the event and uh, and show them a great time um, at the Briar and and show them you know where where they might want to get to one day. So um, you know it's exciting. It's a, it's going to be a really exciting year. And uh, thank you for having me today. Thank you very much for joining us, Nolan. We really appreciate your taking the time and speaking to our group. Um, I know all of our club, clubs in BC welcome your news and welcome having you speak to them. Again, thank you. Chat's working, yeah. Good. So now we'll move to presentation of the 23-24 financial statements and I will call on Scott Braley to, pre to present these to you. Miss Mike, you um, again. Thanks, Brenda, and thanks, Nolan, for joining us from Edmonton. I, I know it's not a great night there on the the hockey side, so uh, good we're talking about curling and and not that other ice sport. Um, we're going to go through the financial statements now, and I, I see there's 40 people on the line. And just to say that you you all have a, uh, three jobs now. And the uh, first is to uh, look, well, well, I guess that's the next slide. Well, we're, this is what we're doing first is the 23-24 results, then the 23-24 audit report, and finally, the appointment of the auditor. And we'll go next slide, if we can, <laughs> or I can make it up. There we are. There's your three jobs. Oops, back to that slide. There we are. Um, the first job is to know the principal sources of Curl BC's revenues. And the second, how these funds are used and spent and then to be aware of the financial statements and the auditor's report. And next. So the Curl BC financial report. So you're looking now at the green book and I'll be referring to that as we go along. It was sent out last night. Uh, hopefully all of you have received it. Uh, bottom line, unfortunately, this year is a deficit of 127,000. We don't normally report that significant a deficit, but uh, uh, Brenda McCullough and I got into a bit of a uh, discussion this year with the auditor about them not wanting to include 89,000 in year-end funding, which would uh, was allocated uh, from our understanding in, in February and then announced in early March, but not received by us until April. So what it's done is, is skewed the result. Um, we think uh, a more accurate portrayal is a, a $38,000 um, deficit, uh, which uh, we can point towards uh, use of restricted funds. 
Um, however, <clears throat> this is uh, the, the auditor is independent and we have to go with their report. They have put a note uh, near the end of the report, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, uh, but uh, that just means the 89,000 will be uh, attributed to the 2024-25 fiscal year instead of the current one or previous one. And so fund balances are always important as we look at the re results here. Uh, the general or unrestricted fund is 262000 Capital assets, which is investments in equipment, is 74000 Restricted fund of 32500 And the operating reserve fund, which has been internally restricted, uh, is by the board is 60,000. So what the heck are those funds? Whoops. <laughs> uh, they're on the next slide. And here they are. So this is an explanation of the four funds. The general fund unrestricted is uh, handles uh, core operations in the three pillars the three pillars of our strategic plan, which you'll hear more about under the operations report. Invested in capital assets is the value of the funds invested, a uh, net of amortization. And there is an explanation in the statements of how that amortization works. The restricted fund usually pertains to grants received at the end of the previous fiscal year, which have to be spent within the next fiscal year. Uh, the unfortunate uh, result of that is that there's, there's no revenue against those expenses in the 23-24 fiscal year, although there was 102,000 of, of restricted. So that does impact. And finally, the operating reserve fund was established by the board uh, two or three years ago. The idea is to make it available to member facilities in urgent need of low cost loans. We uh, are still, we have about 60,000 and it's not really enough to loan out too much yet, but it is available there if a club is in dire need for a small loan. And next slide. So how did we get here? Uh, well, the restricted fund, which you see mentioned there, is actually a combination of the three that we just discussed, the capital assets, restricted fund, and operating reserve fund. So it's gone down 65,000. That makes sense when we had uh, about 102,000 in restricted funds and now have about 32,000. So there there was spending of that restricted fund uh, on what the grants were allocated for the previous fiscal year. The um, unrestricted fund is down 62,000 and that is more of a concern for us, but it we know that there was a lot more expenses on um, human resources this past year with people leaving and uh, having to hire up and also uh, with some unexpected competition costs, uh, which ended up being about 100000 in subsidy, uh, which uh, strained that unrestricted fund. You'll notice in just while we're looking at that slide in 21 and 22, those two fiscal years, that we actually went up 274,000. That was during the COVID years of, of heavy subsidy. And so we are still in, in good shape financially, thanks to that significant amount of funding received uh, during those two years. So I'm, I'm now going to, uh, if for those of you who have the green book in front of you, uh, call your attention to page eight, and we're going to look at the uh, statement of financial position or balance sheet. And you'll see the last four years on this slide of, first of all, the restricted fund, and it has gone down here. So that's the 60,000 operational reserve fund 
plus the 32,500 of remaining restricted funds from the previous year. Unrestricted has gone down 60. That's the one we mentioned uh, is a concern. So we'd want to make sure that uh, we build that back up. The 89,000, if it had been recorded, <laughs> it would have been the reverse effect here. Uh, and it, it would have gone, uh, actually been a positive impact here. And finally, property and equipment has gone up 5,000 because we needed to uh, purchase some equipment, necessary equipment and uh, computers and so on. The next slide. So what does the uh, statement of financial position on page eight show you? Under assets, there's decreased cash and receivables but increased prepaid expenses and property and equipment, which we just mentioned. Under the liabilities, the payables are current and the SIBA loan of 30,000 has been paid back as required by the end of last year. Deferred revenue has increased for camps and courses, particularly for rock slide, uh, where a lot of people paid for that camp and some April courses before the end of March. The fund balances are net assets or equity for the organization. Um, what you see there uh, is the allocation of restricted grants received in uh, previous year, transfers for equipment purchases and amortization, and maintenance of the internally restricted ORF operating reserve fund. From pages 12 to 21 are notes, and they're there to help you understand the financial statements and hopefully answer any questions you would have. Uh, the first couple are fairly standard, the nature of the organization, which is a nonprofit, summary of significant accounting policies. This section, I think, gets longer every year, so a bit of a dry read, but it, it's something required by uh, accounting standards. Capital assets in note four, uh, that allows you to understand how um, the, the current value of the capital assets is determined. Note five tells you that the deferred lease inducement has been fully amortized. So it means we've been in this office for over 10 years and uh, whether the auditor ultimately suggests removing that from the books, but this was the first year that it had uh, been fully amortized. I believe the amount, 38.5 was it? Um, the restricted fund reductions is a note seven. So that shows you what uh, grants were spent uh, over the last year and that there's still a little bit left that uh, we need to um, spend. Those are mainly participation grants, which uh, Kim Dennis oversees, and she has to put in reports on, on how those are all spent. Note nine is under explains to you there is a commitment uh, for five years. It was a renewal of the office space we're in. So uh, we're just nearing the end of the 11th year here. So four more years to go. Note 10, actually, whoa, 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 uh, come back, thank you. Uh, note 10 uh, describes the Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Uh, this was started after the 2010 Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. And uh, the idea here uh, was to raise a, a significant fund and use um, the 5% proceeds of it each year uh, as an independent source of revenue for the organization. It explains how much is there. We receive, uh, Crow BC, approximately $3,000 from it each year. Uh, so we'd like to build that up more. Um, number 11, uh, note stock talks about uh, contra or in-kind sponsorship and how that's recorded. And then the 50-50 raffle and uh, the, the very successful Curl BC raffle, uh, along with uh, which we also helped a couple of clubs run for special events. 
Note 12 explains that the no governors uh, received remuneration. One employee received more than 75000 and uh, not really much reference to contractors. And finally, uh, Note 13, uh, explanation of the financial instruments. And so then we go to page 22, and we get to the schedules, one and two, and then the following page schedules, three and four. Schedules one and two are about revenue, and it's additional information to show the diversity of grant funding sources. So we uh, endeavor to access provincial and federal funding wherever we can. It also includes the note about the 89,000. This was the compromise we reached with the auditor was that they would note it and indicate that while it was announced uh, that 7.3 million would be distributed in March, we didn't actually receive the letter confirming it until April 15th. So that gives you an idea of that um, and allowed them to um, fulfill their um, independent and required role as an auditor. And finally, the uh, schedules three and four uh, include a breakout to show how uh, these these uh, grants are have been expensed. And now we're going to flip and go back to the front of the report and uh, near the front anyway. So this is, we're now on page five. So if you have your green book in hand uh, or on the, the computer, go to page five and you'll see that it is a qualified audit, but this is very standard. The wording in here, I, I did ask the auditor the question is, I said, is there any spe anything special this year in your qualification? They said, no. Um, again, that requires three pages for them to explain um, they, both the introduction to the statement and then um, the, how it is qualified. And they need to do this to protect themselves because not everything uh, can they fully audit, uh, for example, event revenue is uh, that uh, a club is perhaps generated on behalf of curl bc it's very difficult for them to audit that part but uh, the, we do provide them with, with as much detail as we can and then we go to the front very front of the report i would just say pages two to three are my commentary mainly to the, uh, yeah, you can move forward in the slide. Uh, pages two to three, my commentary that it's similar to what I provide to the board each month, uh, just on the, the financial statements themselves, and actually looks at the statements in terms of our, the three pillars of our strategic plan. Normally, I would provide a couple of graphs in here that help you show what we're talking about, but these statements were delivered very late this year, and so uh, we didn't have time uh, to include that. We will next year. Um, and so the page four is where we'll finish, Brenda, and on here we're uh, comparing the current results to the planned results, in other words, the budget, and so you can look at actual versus budget. And then the next table there shows you um, what is the budget for this current year, but that was assuming the 89,000 was going to be counted. So we now add 89,000 to that. Um, 24 and 25 onwards, I, unfortunately I see that was edited out of, this, of the report, but uh, what we're doing here is continuing a long-term focus, measuring outcomes, providing monthly updates and continuing to diversify revenue sources and for not not only for curl bc but for curling centers wherever we can and that may be helping with accessing grants and growing fundraising options and let it use the example of the bc amateur sport fund projects which help clubs to or well provide clubs with the opportunity to provide tax receipts for donations. 
So, Brenda, that's all I had to say. Um, I, I'm going to uh, send it back to you to see if there's any questions. Okay, I believe that there is already one question in the chat box, and it relates to the operating reserve. And I think the gist of the question, or make, I have it now, has the operating reserve fund been allocated to or used to support a club or clubs in the need of low cost loans this this past season? No, and uh, <laughs> we haven't. Um, and the reason we haven't really promoted it, uh, uh, two reasons really. One, there's not a lot in that reserve and I, our cash flow reserves have been tested um, by a delay in government funding all throughout the past year. So uh, we hope to change that uh, over next year. So, uh, but uh, we could still um, provide uh, small loans, probably of up to 10,000 if, if, if needed. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a challenge with government over the past year. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Uh, we're just checking the chat box now. Nope, we just see a thank you. So thank you very much, Scott. I believe that concludes the questions. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Rhonda. Um, appointment of the auditor. Over the past year, Low Calder LLP has done an excellent job for our organization. They have agreed to conduct next year's annual audit at the same nonprofit rate as ProBC has previously received. The motion, appointment of Loan Calder LLP as auditors for ProBC for the 2024 25 fiscal year was moved by the Vancouver Curling Club. And we do need a seconder if one of the clubs could second this motion in the chat box. Could they do so now? Oh. Did it in the Q and A. Campbell? The chat box is working now. Okay, sorry. Campbell the chat River. box. Is... Oh, thank you, Kim. Um, the Campbell River Curling Club has seconded the motion, and I open the floor to any discussion. Seeing none, I now call for the vote. As before, please use the chat box only if you are opposed. Seeing none, I will move on to the election of the governors. As mentioned in my introduction, we have four candidates, three, for three-year terms and one for a two-year term. We are going to start with the three governors at large for the three-year terms. We have three candidates for these three positions and they are as follows. Drew Carmichael of the Lake Cowichan and Duncan Curling Clubs. He is new to the board. Pauline Piller, of the Clinton Curling Club, and she is new to the board. Penny Shantz of the Vernon Curling Club, and she is new to the board. With no other candidates for these three-year terms, all three of these candidates shall be considered elected by acclamation once approved by the membership. The motion to elect Drew Carmichael, Pauline Piller, and Penny Shantz to three-year terms 
by acclamation was moved by the Victoria Curling Club, Paul Addison, and seconded by the Richmond Curling Club, Tom Wilkinson. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. Seeing none, I declare Drew, Pauline, and Penny elected by acclamation, and I would like to thank them all for agreeing to serve. Next, we have one candidate for one two-year term on the board, Dwayne Uidi of Powell River Curling Club. He is also new to the board. Upon a successful motion to approve the candidate, shall be considered elected by acclamation. The motion to elect Dwayne Uidi to a two-year term by acclamation was moved by Grand Forks Curling Club. Oh, sorry. Are they both going? I think we have to pass. Okay, I need to have a mover and a seconder for this motion. Could I please have two clubs indicate within the chat box a mo the support of the motion and a seconder for the motion? We got two seconds. <laughs> There we go. VCC okay. will do the motion. The Vancouver Club. And I think Abbotsford was the first one to second. I have to make sure that's a, oh, no, sorry, Armstrong. And Armstrong, Vancouver Curling Club proposed the motion, and this was seconded by the Armstrong Curling Club. Thank you very much. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. I declare Dwayne elected by acclamation, and I would like to thank him for agreeing to serve. <laughs> I will now move to approve Curl BC Life membership for Paul Addison. Paul Addison is being nominated as a life member for Curl BC due to his exceptional contributions and leadership in the sport. He was one of the first governors at large elected by the membership where he initiated the member engagement committee and served on the governance committee, de demonstrating his commitment to effective organizational oversight. Despite his extensive involvement at the provincial and national levels, Paul consistently makes time to assist clubs, and curlers with their questions and showcasing his dedication to the curling community. The motion to name Paul Addison as a Curl BC Life member was moved by Parksville Curling Club and seconded by the Campbell River Curling Club. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. Seeing none, I declare Paul's Curl BC Life membership approved, and I would like to offer him our sincere thanks for his many years of service to the sport of curling in BC. Congratulations, Paul. Motion to approve Curl BC Life Membership for Terry Palinchuk. Terry is being nominated as a life member for her exceptional leadership and dedication to curling in BC. As Curl BC's chair during an unprecedented season, Terry demonstrated invaluable calm and reliability. She chaired the competitions committee navigating significant changes in the competitive landscape. 
Terry now serves on Curling Canada's board, further demonstrating to, sorry, further contributing to the sport's national governance. Terry's outstanding volunteerism and commitment have been critical to curling's development and advancement in the province. The motion to name Terry Palinchuk as a Curl BC Life member was moved by the Qualicum and District Curling Club and seconded by the Chilliwack Curling Club. And I now call for the vote. Please use the chat box only if you are opposed. I declare Terry's Curl BC Life membership approved. And I would like to offer her our sincere, sincere thanks for her many years of service to the sport of curling in BC. Congratulations, Terry. For both of them, Paul. Operational report. We're pleased to have Scott present our operational report. Thank you. I just have to find my right uh, file here. But I, before that, I, I just want to thank uh, the the four governors for coming forth and putting up their hands to serve. We we had a meeting today, and it, uh, they're all going to do an exceptional job. So really looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Uh, a big personal thank you to Paul Addison and Terry Palinchuk. I, I, I can't think of two more deserving people for life membership in Curl BC. Uh, all of us who have had a chance to work with them over the years, um, just exceptional and uh, great to see them contribute not only at the local but the, uh, but the provincial and even national level on the Curling Canada board. So, so uh, excellent. Um, we're on to the operational report and I just have to uh, flip my uh, script here and there it is. And uh, if we could uh, look at the blue book uh, as the reference, if any of you don't have this, uh, the two files that were sent out, uh, someone can send you the link. Uh, just put the request in the chat if you if you need that. Uh, I call this the the blue book, and uh, it within that uh, you'll see the outline of where how we operate at Curl BC, and this is this is mainly a staff report, and so there's much more detail in the blue book than I'm going to mention here. Uh, but I will say that the framework is in three pillars, and so we're going to emphasize those three pillars of operation. And then the nine end statements, three for each pillar, which are essentially the goals uh, that we're heading towards. Uh, the Curl BC board will be reviewing this uh, framework tomorrow. The new board, and uh, I, I know we've already talked about it a bit, but uh, I'm sure they'll be adding value to it as as we go along. But the past year, how did we do? Well, pillar one is about enhancing member services and engagement, and uh, it was mentioned earlier that Paul Addison was quite instrumental in, in, in moving this up the priority list, and I, I can vouch for that because uh, I was there at that strategic planning session where he did that about seven years ago, and uh, good to see that type of legacy continuing. The three end statements under this pillar are about member services, education, and communications. So how did we do? First of all, member services. Our lead on this is Kim Dennis, and she does a great job with the assistance of Lindsay Shannon. And one of the areas that we worked on uh, and hosted in Chilliwack, was, uh, the Chilliwack Curling Club, was the Business of Curling Symposium. And so it, it was a great success last year. Uh, and um, we worked very closely with Curling Canada on this. In fact, it is a Curling Canada program that we help deliver in BC. Um, there has been a rise in the membership numbers. So we're back to about 23,300, which is actually higher than we were pre-COVID. 
So this is a very good sign. And we're getting more and more curling centers reporting on their casual or one-time visitors. There are about 33,000 that were reported, but we think there's probably closer to 100,000. And so anything you can do to uh, report all your numbers you have, this is after the season. You just have to let Kim know that there were a thousand school kids or or how many were there and we would like to this the, the more the better in terms of promoting how much involvement there is with curling each year finally in this area is safe sport and I, we prefer safety in sport and we're continuing to engage with our membership on uh ad adapting and adopting um Curl BC's safe sport policies to make sure we're all uh, synchronized here and Curl BC's safe sport policies originated with Curling Canada. We customize them to work in BC and uh, very important. We, we all have that uh, safety first. And next slide, education. This is led by Paul Cheka and he works very hard in three areas here. That's uh, coaches, officials, and ice tech education. And there are courses in all three that are run, uh, many of them in person, but some of them online. And we had a lot of courses uh, post COVID and it, it just uh, keeps growing. And Curl, Curl BC is known for being one of the leading, if not the leading, um, provincial sport organization in education. In uh, as a uh, example, in coaching, we almost doubled our numbers involved with courses uh, this past year. And um, as we recover from the pandemic, it's it's so important to have strong educational programs. The uh, third end statement here under pillar one is communications and kevin barrar is our new communications manager and some great numbers from kevin uh, that you'll see in the the blue books report but suffice it to say that digital and social media all saw positive numbers including increased followers among all our social media channels with Facebook being our most popular. I think I saw 11,000. That's amazing to me when I, I think just a few years ago, we were trying to get above a thousand. So uh, thanks to everybody who's following along and uh, a nice development that was locally uh, um, implemented was in Penticton where they got the BC senior championships on TELUS Optic TV, which was the first. We're going to move to pillar two now, and this is leading long-term curler development. So this is about the development of curlers. And so this range right from very beginner to the sophisticated high performance curler who's out there competing with the world. Under this area, really three key words for me are, well, there's four words participation, competitions, and then high performance. So those are the three areas we're working on and those are the end statements in those three. Um, and next slide. <laughs> I don't have control of the slide, sorry. I don't, anybody turns that? There we go. So I just wanted to point out on this one that that we did update the wording of this end statement last year, and it was really to uh, get in sync with the more um, most recent terminology you started started nationally, but we also use it here. I'll just read it out: to growth in diverse and inclusive. Try learn play. Try learn play programs with member facilities throughout BC. 
it's not really anything Curl BC can do on its own. We don't have a facility, but it's working with you, our member facilities, on in increasing uh, diversity and inclusive, inclusivity in this area. We have the first of our dynamic duos uh, running this area, and that's Paul Cheka and Kim Dennis. And we're still on N4, whoever's switching flights. And uh, so again, that's participation is the main point here. Um, so a couple of examples for you. Curl BC collaborated with Curling Canada to run a successful girls rock program in Maple Ridge last season. And 37 girls came out to try curling. So that, that was a great success. And 20 of our member facilities used floor curling, inflatable, and street curling resources, which were part of that. When we started talking about capital assets we'd purchased over the last couple of years, that's uh, where we, we, we purchased some in that program area, and it's great to see them being well used. And now we can uh, switch to N5, which is about competitions. And here's our second dynamic duel. It's Sherry Taylor and Lindsay Shannon are running uh, competitions for us now. And during the, uh, the past season, we've partnered with 10 member facilities to successfully deliver 17 BC championships in four curl bc zones so a uh, big project each year it's about a quarter million dollar budget to put it on all those uh competitions and championships last season also saw the 2024 bc winter games for uh, under 16 athletes uh, being held in quinell latako and there was an inaugural Canada Winter Games Mixed Doubles qualifier. So uh, good to see Mixed Doubles being added to the Canada Winter Games. The, whoop, uh, the N6 High Performance, our third dynamic duel, and this is Melissa Sligo and Clancy Grandy. I'm thinking none of them want to be called second or third. They're probably all first in dynamic duels because they they're all doing an exceptional job um one of the uh points they wanted to uh, make was that the high performance program is now switched to an individual application system it used to be team-based they're finding this is uh, working better and i love this next stat uh there were 50 funded athletes through this program uh 35 of them uh went on to uh, Canadian championships in men's, women's, mixed doubles, U21, U18, U Sport, and Pac West. That's 70%. So that that's that's great. And congratulations to all those athletes and all the coaches that helped them get there. And the third pillar. This one is more um, about external partnerships, and internal capacity. We need to build both. Unfortunately, I'm on my own on this one. I'm not part of a dynamic duel. So this is N7, uh, uh, the building partnership. Nope, oh, we're not there yet. The uh, next slide. <laughs> this one is um, about revenue generation and good corporate governance. So. That's Scott's name beside that one. And uh, these figures are actually down this year because we were hosting a the World Wheelchair Championships last year. And so we, we received some additional grants and federal support. Um, but we still maintain 470,000 in provincial government grants and close to 46,000 in federal support. Um, we, uh, a few years ago or a couple of years ago now, I guess, um, initiated the 50-50 so that we would have an independent way of generating revenue. It's uh, for the Curl BC 50-50 monthly raffle, we generated 178000 with the help of 82 facilities. So almost all our member facilities took part as well as three of our affiliated associations we also worked with two 
sites at two sites, uh, one being the Pan Continental in Kelowna, that generated about 21,000 and 50 50 sales, and then the Squamalt Victoria hosting the BC men's and women's generated another 17,000. So, um, about 227,000 in 50 50 revenue this past year. So, it's a big success, and it, it will get even bigger next year as we work with Kelowna and the Briar Committee on. Uh, uh, we're going to try and set a record, but we'll we'll see how that goes. Just in terms of the uh, the breakdown on the fifty fifty, it's fifty percent uh, goes to the the lucky winners. Uh, about forty percent goes to the designated um, beneficiary. So that uh, could be any club that you choose or affiliated association that you would like to see from the see benefit from your purchase. And 10% goes towards covering admin costs. And we're on to end eight. Uh, again, this is one I head up and uh, no dynamic duel. I'm going to have to worry on work on that. So strategic partnerships and new infrastructure. And that last one, infrastructure, uh, I'm hearing more and more from our board. They they want this to be the top priority. They uh, it recognize that it, it's the elephant in the room if we don't talk about it. It's uh, aging infrastructure is a challenge for a lot of you. And we, we need to be as better prepared, as prepared as possible to help you. Although there are some uh, successes out there of uh, new facilities or uh, rejuvenated facilities. So uh, part of that is uh, continuing to work with each of the, our member facilities to enhance relationships with their municipality. Uh, the municipality is so key in this, as is the regional district, just to make sure there's good relations and full support. It's always so disappointing to hear there's a municipal council that doesn't support curling. We we wonder why not, but it, it may be because we haven't done the education process with them. So uh, Curl BC, uh, there's a lot of allies out there, both provincially and nationally, that, who we work with. In particular, we work with Sport BC, which is the umbrella organization for all provincial sport organizations. Curling Canada, as you heard from Nolan and all uh, our other um, member associations, which includes the provincial and territorial associations. Via Sport, uh, which is our funding, uh, uh, where our provincial government funding flows through uh, and ends up being our funding agent. But they, they have a lot of committees and we're involved with several of those. And uh, so I, I would say uh, we're interested in, in any partnership uh, that would help to promote curling, but also help the provincial and national sports system. And finally, uh, a different version of the dynamic duel. This one's Kevin and Kim. They are working in the area of recognition and awards. And I, I know hearing from the chair of the committee, uh, Terry Phillips, who's just stepping down from the board, that uh, they were thrilled to be able to celebrate uh, in, in, with a full slate of awards this year, and you saw that uh, the video at the beginning uh, for players, coaches, officials, and volunteers. They're uh, a long-standing memorial scholarship, which is independent from Curl BC, but they ask us to help select uh, to congratulate Aaron Fitzgibbon, who was awarded the Gordon Huey Memorial Scholarship, which is held by the Victoria Foundation. And new this year was the Pacific Coast Masters Curling Association Scholarship uh, for $1,000, which went to Kieran Stephen, and I, I believe of Kimberly. And he, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure he was delighted. And, and I just uh, want to call out uh, Lawrence Widowich, who uh, thought of this, and uh, just a pleasure to work with the Pacific Coast Masters Curling Association on this award. 
I think that's it for me, uh, Brenda, unless there's any questions about that uh, or anything in the Blue Book. And there are other staff on the line who may want to dispute who is the top dual or a dynamic dual or could answer your questions. Thank you, Scott. I uh, was just going to ask if anyone else on who's been listening has any more questions. We do have one question um, that I think might need to be dealt with after the meeting, but um, and it talks about um, excellence in delivering competitions and what happens when excellence is not the bar. Um, that might just need some more thought. Well, I can give a at least a partial answer, and then okay. uh, uh, the, the, each year we uh, do get feedback from every division. So the staff's always been really good about uh, surveying the uh, competitors, encouraging everybody to provide their feedback, and then um, they they assemble that feedback and it's discussed, and also. Um, we have formed additional committees. Um, is Sherry able to speak or is she on a non-speaking mode? If you can come off mute, Sherry, uh, maybe you can just talk about the uh, committees that have been formed, advisory committees. Sure, yeah. We've gone ahead um, and created um, three advisory groups, one being our adult advisory group, Second will be our junior advisory committee. And the third is our officials advisory committee. These committees are um, being established currently. We just finalized our officials advisory committee, but we are looking for members for our adult and youth advisory committees. And this will help shape that excellence in competition delivery, going through what has worked in the past and what we need to go work on going forward in the future. So that's where we are sort of at. And these committees will then take their information to our competitions committee, which is then um, where we will determine what changes or suggestions need to be done moving forward. Thanks very much, Sherry, on the spot there. And I, I will say at the board uh, today, there was some discussion of, of, you know, are there things that we're still doing that were done 25 years ago, but we don't necessarily still need to do them. Some of these things are small, but uh, we, we do need to recognize times change and we want to make sure uh, we, we stay with the times and enhance our offerings each time. But so thanks for the question. And thank you, Scott and Sherry for that response to that question. Um, hopefully, the individual who asked the question can follow up if they feel they need to. Again, thank you very much. I, I just saw Patrick uh, Prade's comment as well. I completely agree with him on the uh, the idea that um, too few clubs are saving and according for long term replacement. Of course, much easier to do, uh, or sorry, to say than do. And um, so how can we help you uh, through the Business of Curling program start to develop that facility renewal or replacement program is, is on the Business of Curling agenda? And thank you, Melanie, for your comment about the two-year schedule for tentative dates. Um, it's very heartening to see that this early in the season. So I will move on to recognition of retiring board members. Mor Morgan Lipka and Terry Phillips have completed their terms as governor. We are very proud of the contributions they have made to Curl BC. Their passion will be missed on the board, but we all know it will continue in their future endeavors and certainly in their love of curling. On behalf of Curl BC family, we would like to thank you for your time and for your dedication to our sport. And my concluding remarks following this. 
annual general meeting, the new board will meet to elect the executive and the members will be form, informed shortly after the meeting is completed. Assuming there is no further business, a motion to adjourn has been moved. Also, oh. it's not on, so we need it. Over. Okay. Um, has been moved by Williams Lake Curling Club. And I would ask one of the member clubs to second that motion. Please. Oops. And it's the Vancouver Curling Club. Yeah. That's Patrick Prade. Mm -hmm. Patrick Prade at the Vancouver Curling Club. Thank you very much. I declare the motion approved and the meeting is adjourned. On behalf of the board and staff, please stay safe and have a great summer. And we'll see you next year curling. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you.